with some of our area and volume oriented problems, the pictures can be helpful, but oftentimes we can get away without them. It's like, well, I know it's a circle and I got an area, so I don't really need to draw a circle. This is one though that the, that the picture is really gonna make a big difference for you. So draw that little picture out so we can start seeing what's going on here. And I'm gonna start labeling what I know here. So I know the kite is 100 feet above the ground. And we know that the kite is moving in a direction parallel to the ground. In other words, it's moving sideways like this. And it's moving at a rate of 10 feet per second. Now, specifically, though, you notice that it's being blown away from the person holding the string. So that means it's going, in my little picture here, to the right. That is away from the person that's holding our string here. You do a great little art project so we can see where it all goes. All right, so now... At what rate must the string be let out when the length of the string, so that's the part connecting the person to the kite, is 200 feet. And that length is gonna be changing to be able to maintain this same situation. That is, we're trying to keep it 100 feet above the ground as it's being blown away from us. All right. So now that we can see that picture, we can start figuring out, okay, what type of equation am I going to need to use with it? And figuring out that equation can sometimes be a little bit tricky because of how we naturally want to label this. The fact that I wrote this 10 feet per second up here really shows what's happening with that kite. But as that length is increasing, which side of this triangle is it changing? You'll hopefully notice that it's this distance down here. It means that this is the 10 feet per second. So this length, the width of our triangle is changing by that amount. That then makes it a little bit easier to tell what type of equation we're gonna to need to use because you'll notice we have a right triangle. I know it's right triangle here because uh, we got our ground along the base and then it's going straight up to measure height. And we're looking at the three lengths of that right triangle. So that tells me to use Pythagorean theorem. So this one all boils down to doing a Pythagorean theorem thing, kind of like we did back when we did the ladder problems. So the first thing I want to do is I want to label each side with a letter to represent what it's really talking about. And I'm going to use L for the length of the string, H for the height, and W for the width of this triangle. I could also use like D for distance to the kite or something like that, or G for ground. Whatever makes sense to you, go ahead and use that. It just needs to be something meaningful rather than just plain old A, B, and C. Having done that, I can now set up my Pythagorean theorem equation. So it's going to be W squared plus H squared equals L squared. All right, that's relating all the sides of this triangle. Now I can go ahead and find my derivative with respect to time, a fact that I know I must do because I'm trying to figure out the rate. And so I've now found my derivative with respect to time, and I can start seeing how do I plug things in. Now, I want you to actually try doing this again before I work it through, because I want you seeing what information do you have and what don't you have, and then how could you possibly fix and find maybe anything that you don't know. So take a moment, pause this, and do that before coming back and we continue it. So when you went and started trying to actually plug this stuff in yourself, the very first thing that you would have tried to plug in, the W value, you would have had a little bit of an issue. We don't know what W is here, but we can find out because we do have a right triangle and we know two of the sides and we just need to find the third side. So we can go ahead and we can use Pythagorean theorem to solve for that. And so when we solve that out for W, we end up finding that w equals the square root of 30,000, or if you actually remember how to reduce that radical, we could simplify that down to be 100 root 3, which is at least a little bit easier to look at. All right, now let's go back and see what else we can plug in and see how everything is working from there. So I'm now going to go ahead and plug that in over here. So I'm going to do 2 times my 100 root 3 over here. I'm just going to keep plugging in from there. 
And at this point, when I hit the DH over DT, I again have to figure out what would that number be? Because I knew what DW over DT was because the width is increasing by 10 feet per second. However, what about the height? How quickly is the height changing? Well, remember that our whole goal with this is to try to keep the kite at the same height. That is, we want to keep it at 100 feet, which means it's not going to be changing at all. So then we want our dh over dt value to be 0. And then that's going to then be equal to the 2 times the length of 200 times the dl over dt, which is exactly what we're trying to find. So now that we've gotten to this point, now it's a matter of solving the whole equation for the dl over dt. And so we end up getting 5 root 3 for dl over dt. And again, I want to go ahead and now take a look. What would that be as a decimal, just so I can turn it into something that maybe makes a little bit more sense when it's actually practically looking at how fast we have to let this line out? And that gives us about... 8.66, include your units once again. This would be in feet per second. And so we should be letting out about 8.66 feet of line every second if we're going to be trying to keep this kite at a height of 100 feet.